Joining me now to discuss the role of the ICC and prospects for an investigation into Israel's alleged violations is Luis Moreno Ocampo, who served as the ICC's first chief prosecutor from 2003 to 2012. Mr. Ocampo, Palestinian leaders are taking the case of Shirin Abu Akleh's killing to the International Criminal Court. Israel has confirmed that it will not conduct a criminal investigation into the killing. Now, since Israel is unwilling to investigate, it has said so explicitly, does it make the Palestinian case for an ICC investigation and prosecution stronger? Well, let, let me clarify. The, the investigation is basically the, the in, hand, in the hands of the Palestinian authorities. If they found an Israeli soldier killed a journalist, legally, Palestine cannot prosecute an Israeli person. Therefore, if Israel is not investigating the crimes, the only possibility will be the International Criminal Court. So, the, but the first thing, the first step is for Palestine to investigate the crimes. They had to, Palestine had to identify who was the killer. Was a Israeli soldier a killer? That could be very, is the finding the Palestine need to send the case to ICC. Because if, if it's not Israel, it, it, Palestine could investigate the crime. But if it is an Israeli soldier, Palestine legally cannot investigate the crime. Therefore, the international criminal court could intervene. But the ICC is clear. It investigates cases when states are either unwilling or unable to do so themselves. The Israelis said that they were unwilling. The Palestinian Authority may be unable to prosecute this case. Is there any other legal recourse but the ICC for this? Yeah, it should be a war crime. So. It should be a crime committed by an Israeli soldier attacking the journalists as a war crime. Well, Therefore, the UN Special Rapporteur I, on the Occupied Palestinian Territory says there is potentially war crimes that were committed according to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, all these comments are fine, but in a, in a court of justice, you need evidence. So the prosecutor of the ICC will need evidence who were the Israeli soldiers who shoot the journalists? And it, it's not a technicality. It's really important because other than the anger in Palestine about this crime, and the world is watching, and Israel also needs to clarify this issue. So I think it's really, really important to transform this anger into a very, very strong investigation. We need to know exactly who killed her and why she killed her. Why the soldier killed her? And even Israel refused to do the investigation, Palestine could still ask the question. Palestine could ask, ask the Israelis about the soldiers' movement, ask questions about But, but, but again, so the question is, though, the question is, should the ICC investigate? Should the ICC dispatch its own investigators? You say you need evidence, but the ICC was very quick to send at least 42 investigators, if not more, to investigate uh, alleged Russian crimes committed in Ukraine. Shouldn't it do the same in this case? So there have been zero investigators from the ICC sent to the occupied Palestinian That's territory. Fine. This will be always a decision of the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. So the current prosecutor has the decision to do it or not to do it. So to provide better chances to open the investigation, you have to prove that in principle it's a war crime. You have to prove who commit the crime. And very important, I see ex demand for war crimes be part of a plan or a policy. So would be great for the prosecutor to show that this is not an isolated incident. The killing of the journalist is part of a plan to shoot people in, in Palestine. So all these elements need to be proven. So it's not a technicality. I, I, I think we need to help Palestinian Authority to do it better. It's been well documented that there have been countless instances of attacks on civilians and journalists and a lack of accountability. In fact, uh, the uh, 
the, the case was brought to the ICC from the International Federation of Journalists Against the State of, uh, of Israel in early April. That was well before Abu Akleh's killing. The complaint detailed Israel's, quote, systemic targeting of Palestinian journalists. And according to Reporters Without Borders, 35 journalists were killed while working in Israel and the occupied Palestinian ter territory since 2000. The Israeli army never acknowledged any responsibility, and that is according to Haaretz and Israeli organizations as well. Let me ask you this. If you were prosecutor today, and as you said, it could be at the discretion of the prosecutor to open an investigation or not, would you, based on what we know, would you open an investigation? Look. Yeah, yes or I'm no? Would you, if you were prosecutor today? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the prosecutor. To be to make a decision, you have to be exactly all the information as a, as a prosecutor. So I will not replace my judgment using my judgment to replace the current prosecutor. Instead, to be, to to blame the prosecutor, we should do better. I think Palestine could do more, providing information to the prosecutor, and in fact. TV station like your TV station or Al Jazeera could do more. There are groups in London, for instance, there's a group called Forensic Architecture. They analyze videos and they can define the trajectory of the bullet. They can add information to this investigation. But there as you know, there's plenty of video do. evidence around. And as you have pointed out yourself in an interview published on the 14th of March in Political, quote, the previous prosecutor, Fatou Ben Souda, your successor, indicted a Libyan military commander because of social media videos showing a man shooting civilians. So there is a precedent, you said. Shouldn't the same apply here? It's possible. It's possible. But it took two years to do that. Why do we need, we need to do faster? And the fastest way, the most efficient way now, is not delegate everything on the International Criminal Court. The faster way to do it is take the Palestinian Authority conducting a good investigation, showing who was a soldier shooting the, the journalist, showing the pattern, showing instructions, showing evidence of everything, and then this complete dossier given to the prosecutor by, by Palestinian Authority demanding justice. But we need different. You are not demanding to investigate. You are offering a very strong investigation. That's what you need to do. Palestine had to conduct the investigation first and then provide to the prosecutor. But why isn't that happening? You served for, for almost a decade as the ICC's first prosecutor from 2003 to 2012. Do you believe there's a strong legal case to be made against Israel at the ICC, given, as we say, the series of well-documented attacks on civilians and journalists? Look, I believe it's very important to do justice because justice avoid retaliation. And what we have in the israel palestinian conflict is permanent retaliation system. So I really believe it's important to do justice. But because I know the International Criminal, Criminal Court, I understand your anger because nothing is happening. However, my advice to you and to the Palestinian Authority and to Israel is do immediately a very strong investigation. And then with all the evidence in your hands, you gave information to the prosecutor office in the interaction. But it, 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 but it isn't advice. just about investigating, no. Mr. Ocampo. It's also about the lack of accountability. Uh, the, the Secretary General of Amnesty no. International said that none of the legal routes are working in Israel. Nothing legally speaking, she said, could lead to justice for Palestinians. Do you agree or disagree with this assessment? I, I, I really appreciate your desire for justice on this. I understand that. However, I'm telling you how the system works. The prosecutor office has demand to do justice in many different countries in the world. Okay? Palestine is one very important situation for the International Criminal Court. And this case is really urgent to do it because I see the anger the killing of the journalist is producing. Killing a journalist is, is closing the eyes of the Palestinian people. So that's why we need to transform this killing into something that changed the situation there. But, but if it is but urgent, if it is urgent, why the foot dragging? Not yeah. just now, but for years. If not the ICC, where do Palestinians turn to? What legal recourse do they have? During your term as prosecutor of the ICC, you rejected Palestinian requests to prosecute Israel's alleged war crimes, specifically its war 
in Gaza, which started in 2008, on the basis that Palestine was not recognized as a state back then. It did later on become a non-member state of the UN, but Palestine was already recognized by more than 130 governments, as you know, by many organizations. Amnesty International said at the time that your decision meant that victims of crimes allegedly committed during the Gaza war and Israel's bombing of Gaza would be denied justice. They said it was a dangerous decision that opened the ICC to accusations of political bias. What do you say to that? Do you regret that decision? Would you have done it differently today? In my time, when the Palestinians came to my office and I explained to them very openly, look, you have a problem because the status say a state can accept jurisdiction and the UN is not treating Palestine as a state. So you have a problem. And Ali Hassan, then Minister of Justice of Palestine, was very clever. He told me, let us give brief you about the issue. And they were briefing me for three years. And I received many pressures, many pressures, including from the Americans, to, to close that, to close the process. And I keep the process open, allowing the Palestinians to develop the idea. And therefore, they went to the UN. And before I leave, I said, look, you are not yet a state. I had to close this. But then after that, a few months later, Palestine got at the UN the, the status of state. Therefore, Fatou Ben Souda, who replaced me, keep working and open the investigation. Now, Karim Khan has the opportunity or the responsibility to do something there. And in order to help him, my advice to you and the Palestinians is the Palestinian Authority has all the resources in their hands to conduct a but You cannot be serious, I'm, Mr. Ocampo. You cannot seriously say that they have all the resources in their hands, can you? They have, uh, yes, uh, and back they to can. your point, you say that at the time Palestine was not recognized as a state. That's true. It wasn't a non-member state, but it, has, it had observer status. It was at your discretion whether or not to admit the no, case no. and to look no, into no, it. No. I mean, you chose not to. I mean, are, are no, you? Are you? No. Hold on. Let me ask you this: are, are you acknowledging that the ICC caves into political pressure and only pursues cases that benefit and suit the powerful countries, whether they're members of the ICC or not, and especially when they're not, as as is the case of, well, of the United States and Israel? I receive enormous pressure from the U.S. to stop the Palestinian analysis. OK, in my time, enormous pressure. They were just very angry with me that I keep open this process to understand the Palestinian situation. And this time gave a space to Palestine to obtain the status that you mentioned, state observer. State observer was obtained in September 2012, after I left. My successor, Fatou Ben Suda, did her job. She opened the investigation. And Karen Kam now should do something, will, will do something on that. As you say, she did, she did her but, job and she paid for I, it. Let, the Trump administration sorry, sanctioned I, I, her and other officials. My advice, let, let me finish. My advice to you is, indeed to blame the ICC, we can do more, we can do better. I, can, I offer my help to Palestinian Authority to help them to conduct a good investigation. I would be happy to help. And we, everyone in the world would be happy to help to identify how the journalist will cause kill. That's really important, Many, because it's very serious. So we'll be happy to help Palestinian Authority to help themselves. And then with a strong investigation, including clarity on how was she killed, and including clarity if this is part of the plan, then we have a strong case to go to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court and demand justice for this case. And Going many, back to what you said just a few moments ago, you said the U.S. asked you to drop the case. If any other country had asked you to drop the case, would you have dropped it? No. You would not have dropped it? No. No, I did not. No. Hold on. I, I, you I, said the U.S. asked I, you to drop I, the I, case and you dropped it. No, I stayed open this examination for three years because the United States was telling me it's a very clear case because Palestine is not considered a state. Why you keep this open? And I say, because I promised them to be brief. I will listen to them before making any decision. So 
they were telling me it's ridiculous that you keep this open because it's clear Palestine is not the state. And I told them, look, they asking me to provide evidence. I will listen to them. Then I finished my analysis. In those days, Palestine was not the state. Then a few months later, Palestine obtained the state uh, grade in the, at the UN. And therefore, situation changed, and the ICC received Palestine. And Palestine is now a state member of the International Criminal Court. That is new. That was a consequence of the effort Palestine did. Similar efforts to achieve the status of state should be done now to investigate the crime. And that's the point for me. Why we should delegate the responsibility? It's better to do the investigation now that Palestine has all the power. Don't delegate power. Use but do you, I, I, I understand power. what you're saying, but the ICC can initiate an investigation in three different ways. If a state party to the Rome Statute requests it, if it is referred to the ICC by the UN Security Council, or if the ICC prosecutor chooses to investigate, you could have chosen to yes. investigate. Do you feel that justice was denied to the almost 1,300 Palestinians who were killed during the Gaza War back in 2008? Look, Palestine conflict has many more than a century now. And it's a shame for the world that this issue is not solved. Okay, I agree with you on that. And I hope the International Criminal Court could help Palestine. And I hope as a citizen, I would like to help Palestine and Israel to solve but, but, this issue. But that isn't the question though, Mr. Ocampo. You, you had the opportunity to help and to implement justice. I you did, didn't. I'm asking I, if you could have done more and if you regret it. No, I did, I did my job because as a prosecutor, I had to respect the rules. Because that's my rules? job as a prosecutor. The impartiality, the impartiality and respect for the law, respect for the law. And that's what I did. In the same way the journalist who was killed, she was not inventing news. She was just presenting what happened on the ground, very sincerely. And that's a journalist, the journalist had to be Tell the truth and respect the rules. Similar to a prosecutor. So as a prosecutor, I respect the rule, but I received a lot of pressure to close my examination. I did not. The next prosecutor opened the investigation. Now the current prosecutor could do something more. Palestine could help. My point is, instead of blame others, we can do more. Should the current prosecutor do more now that there isn't that issue of whether or not Palestine is recognized as a state? I'm not talking his name. I would respect the institution. I, I spent nine years of my life trying to build the institution, and I would respect it. And I hope Palestine could be helped for justice. I, I hope that. And my advice to you and to you, to the Palestinian, is we can do a better investigation. We should do a great investigation. We should show who killed the journalists. We, we should show that it is not an isolated case. All this should be proven very well and then go to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court and ask him, please do justice. This is the case. It's very in, 2000, in 2015, Mr. Ocampo, when you were visiting Israel, you said, quote, you have great lawyers in Israel. You have to present your side of the argument. You also tried to discourage Palestinians from pursuing war crimes uh, and war crime charges against Israel. It was well documented. It was in the Israeli media. You asked them to find, quote unquote, a, a uh, creative way to resolve their differences with Israel. Even though we're talking about serious crimes allegedly being committed against Palestinians, crimes against humanity, including the crime of apartheid and potential war crimes, do you still stand by these statements? Do you think that they should and should have looked for creative ways instead of going to the ICC? My point is, as a prosecutor, I saw, for instance, in, in Darfur, we indicted the head of state, President Bashir. He was removed. He's in jail. One of the militia Sanjawi leaders is in jail today in The Hague doing justice. How much has changed Darfur? Mm, not totally. So. Doing justice is very important, but it is not the only tool that we need. That's why I encourage Palestine to be creative, to learn how to do more. I am helping some people in Palestine. Munir Masri is conducting an analysis of how Balfour Declaration affected Palestinians. So there are many, many things that we can do, and that's the point. But that's precisely the point, Mr. Campo. You just mentioned that you indicted Omar al-Bashir 
the former president of Sudan. In fact, the list of African leaders who've been indicted is quite long. Gaddafi, Laurent Gbagbo, Kenyatta, and so many other African nationals and political and military leaders. Shouldn't the ICC go after others, non-Africans, after Western leaders? Many will argue it should have prosecuted potential war crimes and crimes against humanity in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and yes, in the case of Palestine as well. Okay. Look, first question. You believe African victims don't deserve justice? Of course they do, but don't other victims okay. deserve justice as so, well? Iraqis, Palestinians, Afghans, and others? The point is, yes, we do justice for the African victims because we care about African Africa. So we do justice for African victims and many of the most serious crimes in my time were committed in Africa. In Colombia, there were serious crimes, but Colombia was conducting its own investigation, so we not open Colombia. But, but how can you say this? Iraq, how, can you, how can you ignore Iraq, a crime of aggression that many people have spoken about, a crime that was committed, a war that was committed without a mandate from the United Nations, which makes it illegal? You know that. Iraq, okay. Iraq is not party of the International Criminal Court. Demanding ICC to open investigation in Iraq against Americans is like demanding a German prosecutor to investigate in, in, in Congo. No. It's not the international criminal court prosecutor has no jurisdiction in Iraq nor in the U.S. And therefore, we would not investigate those crimes. What about Afghanistan? Fatou Ben Suda opened the investigation in Afghanistan, and she proposed to investigate the tortures committed in Afghanistan for the Americans. So she did that. So now the current prosecutor had to decide where to go in Afghanistan. So each prosecutor has its own And decisions. he decided to drop the case. Does it leave you with any? Ooh. The current prosecutor decided to drop the case. He didn't see enough urgency or importance to it. Does it I, leave any doubt that the I, ICC is a tool I, in the powerful of, it, sorry, does it leave any doubt that the ICC is a tool in the hands of Western leaders? Look, there will be a lot of pressure on the ICC cases. And each prosecutor had part of the job as a prosecutor is to resist the pressure, to ignore the pressures. I did that in my job. Fatou Bensouda that, did that in her job. And Karin Kam should do that the same. So each of us will have pressures on different sides, people pushing you in different sides. And as prosecutors, we should not do that. We should just keep our mandate and keep our legal mandate. Mr. Campo, be beyond the immediate case, uh, the, the killing of the journalist, by allegedly Israeli soldiers. There's also the potential crime of apartheid, defined in Article 7 of the Rome Statute of the ICC as, quote, inhumane acts committed in the context of an institutionalized regime of systemic oppression and domination by one racial group over any other racial group or groups and committed with the intention of maintaining that regime. Should the ICC investigate Israel for the alleged crime of apartheid? That is, the, that, that is in the hands of current prosecutor Karim Khan. You should ask him the question. But I ask you as a former what? prosecutor, because in 2021, as you know, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International and several human, uh, Israeli human rights organizations said that Israel's discriminatory treatment of Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian ter territory and in, and in Israel proper amounts to apartheid. Do you agree? I will always, I will always try to help the victim of of these crimes. I will help to do justice, but I will not replace the criterion of the current prosecutor. That's his authority and his responsibility. You should ask him what are the crimes that should be investigated. What I know is it will help him if we give him a lot of evidence about crimes committed. That will absolutely transform the, the attitude. So that's why I insist we need to help Palestine Authority to conduct a thorough investigation on the killing of the journalists and including independent actors, including people that beyond any doubt. And then with that, we can present a solid case to the prosecutor. That is what I Sure, recommend. but I mean, the, the abuses that the Palestinians say that they've endured for years go beyond this case. And in fact, if the Palestinian Authority saw that they could prosecute these cases, they would have done so by now. What do you say to uh, reports that have come out of Israeli human rights organizations, whether it's Yeshdin or Beth Selem, that have reached the conclusion that the crime against humanity of apartheid is being committed 
by Israel, that the perpetrators are Israelis and that the victims are Palestinians. These are their words, not mine. Same conclusion that was reached recently by the UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, Michael Link, in his final report to the Council. What do you say to all that? Look, I would love to help any Palestinian, any victim of the crimes, to achieve justice, okay? And I, I think Palestinian Authority are pushing for the, their cases, and they, people in the world can discuss and help in their own way. My assistant is telling you how the system works and how this anger and this frustration of Palestinians could be overcome. And conducting good investigation is the key, is the key, is the basis. So the facts should be clear, and then you, you need to have a very strong investigation, and then you present to the prosecutor, and then you demand explanation to the prosecutor. The prosecutor is a public servant, so he will give explanations. And that is, for me, the path. Just blame institutions is not, is not helping us. We need to do justice for the people. And people, of course, are not, are not lawyers, so we need to help the people to achieve the results. And to do that, my advice is strong investigation, impartial investigation, very well documented in, in information. That was and should that uh, go ahead even if Israel doesn't uh, cooperate because it maintains the court lacks the authority to carry out an investigation against it? Well, one thing is that Israel is not conducting an investigation and is the prime minister, I heard the Prime Minister saying they will conduct an investigation, so I hope they will do it. But if not, one thing is conduct Israeli investigation. A different thing is refuse to cooperate with a Palestinian investigation. Because Palestine can request information to Israel, not delegate the, 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 the investigation. Palestine could say, look, we are conducting the investigation according with the rules, and therefore we need to know what Israeli forces were deployed in this area in those days, or what weapons you were using in those days, or what instructions were give you in, given to these people, or if you are conducting investigations. So Palestine could, could present the question to Israel publicly and see the answer. So I think it's a time to fulfill our responsibilities. Palestine could, request, could, could present the question to Israel and then Israel should answer the question, because Israel is now clearly had to explain what happened with the journalists. The world needs that explanation. Will it get one? Okay, I don't know, but we will demand. We should demand the explanation. That's why, imagine, if Palestinian authorities send the question to Israel, each of you can follow up on that. Each of you can call the Prime Minister of Israel, say, look, you promised an investigation. That's important for Israel. Israel should, should answer this. It's legally mandatory for you. So Palestine could be supported by the world if they conduct an investigation and they present the question to Israel that Israel has to answer. We should follow that process, not delegate the power. Palestine has power. Use it. Use it. All right. Luis Moreno Ocampo, former prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you. Thank you for this interview. It was very interesting.